In this video, we'll learn how we can begin to view multiple texture channels at the same time as we're working on our MARI projects. Okay, great. So in the last video, we learned a bit about channels and layer stacks. Now we've got here an ambient occlusion channel and a diffuse channel for the body mesh on our wolf. Now, one thing I want to point out to you, if I were to come over here to flat lighting, is in this current project, we can only see and work on one channel at a time. So you notice because I have my ambient occlusion channel selected, we're not seeing any of the current gray color that is assigned to our wolf on the diffuse channel. If we select that channel here, you can see inside the canvas we switch back to the default gray color. So this can become a problem as we're creating multiple texture channels to communicate various things for our wolf. We want to be able to see all of these channels at the exact same time. Let me go ahead and turn on our full lighting here. Now the way Mari handles this is with something called a shader. So let's go ahead and jump over here to the shaders palette right over here. The first thing I want to point out to you is there's some viewing options right up here. Now these control what we're seeing on the canvas. So right now what we're looking at is the current channel. Now it just so happens that current channel is filled with a base gray color. But if we were to come over and select the ambient occlusion channel and come back over here, you can see again we are looking at the entirety of the texture information for the ambient occlusion channel. Now if we were to come in here and say I want to look at only the current layer and below. Now this current layer is layer 2. That's the layer we currently have selected. So if we only looked at this layer and below, we're going to be leaving layer 3 off and that's what his torso was imported on. So if we were to select current layer and below, you'll see we no longer see the ambient occlusion information for his torso. Now if we only wanted to look at the current layer, you can see here that now we're only seeing the information on the body mesh for his arms and his feet. That was what was imported with the information on layer 2. Now there is a fourth option here called current paint target. Uh, now in this case, it's going to look the exact same as current layer because the current paint target is layer 2. We know it's the current paint target because the paint palette to the right here is highlighted in orange. But once we start working with things like layer masks and mask stacks, which we'll get into in an upcoming video, uh, this current paint target thing will become incredibly useful. So these are some ways we can filter what we're seeing inside of Mari's canvas. Now again, back to the problem at hand, we want to be able to view all of our texture channels at the same time, so we're going to create a shader. We can do that right over here, and you can see there are a number of different types of shaders that we can use here inside of Mari. We have some really basic types of shaders like the Fong, the Cook Torrance, the Beckman, and the Blinn. We have things like a flat shader, um, and then we have even some application specific shaders. So the Unreal shader, if you're planning on taking your asset into the Unreal Engine. Now if you're working in ZBrush, maybe you're trying to do that, but likely your asset is high, high poly asset, which would probably need to go through many, many steps to get it ready for a game engine. But um, we have other options here in terms of creating shaders for our asset. The BRDF shader is a physically based shader that has come with Mari for a couple of versions now. It's a good option. Now if you're planning on rendering your asset out with something like V-Ray, Arnold, or even Redshift, those shaders are here inside of Mari as well for you to use. Let's go ahead and choose Arnold's AI standard shader here. We'll go ahead and select that and you can see we've added an AI standard here to our viewing list. Now our canvas view changed a bit and I'll show you why. We're going to come in here and just try and give myself a bit more room. It looks like that's about all we're going to get. Um, but basically the way these shaders work is that we are going to create or uh, connect inputs into them. So for our diffuse color, you can see here there's currently not a connection that's made there. 
you can see this box is empty. Let's go ahead and click on that and we'll choose our diffuse channel and connect that to the input for the diffuse color. There we go. Now you can see here that we have a darker gray showing up here. So we also created an ambient occlusion. I believe the AI standard has an input for that. My stylus is not wanting to register. There we go. Let's see if we can find our ambient occlusion input here. Lots and lots of inputs on some of these shaders. And I'm not seeing it. We're not going to worry about it for right now. But um, one thing I do want to point out to you about these inputs is, we, yes, we can connect channels to them right here, but we can also create channels. So let's say we wanted to create something like a specular weight channel. We can simply click this little button right here next to the input, come over here and quickly create our specular weight channel, and I'll go ahead and set that to 2K for right now, and we'll add that on the body only. Now what's cool about creating the channels from the shader is as soon as you create it, it connects it to the input. And there you go. Now this looks a bit odd, uh, but remember the default fill color for that specular weight channel is 50% gray. Now one thing I also want to point out to you about these particular shaders is each one of them is going to have different parameters that are available to you. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here to the very bottom of the shader and you're going to see things like diffuse, specular, and then we have parameters for each one of these. So you can see here we have a specular weight slider here, but we have a now a channel that's supposed to be driving that. Whenever I connect a channel to one of these attributes to drive this data, I typically will just take this slider in the case of the specular weight and I'll slide that all the way up. That one doesn't want to slide. I think I'm having some issues with my tablet, but so I'll just go ahead and type in a value of 1. Now we also have a specular roughness here, and this is likely something you'll want to use a channel to drive, but you can see here inside the shader we can actually control that just with this slider. So if we want more of a diffuse specular highlight, or if we wanted a more of a sharp, glossy look, then we could start to drag that down. Or again, we could connect a channel to drive this attribute. So we have a number of different attributes that are available to us, and these will all change based on the shader that you choose to use inside your Mari project. Now again, the purpose of these shaders is not necessarily to take this shader and give it to maybe your 3D application. It's to mimic this shader inside of Mari. So what we're looking at on our canvas is as close of a representation to the AI standard in this case as it can possibly be. This also ensures that we are creating the correct channels based on the inputs for the AI standard shader. You'll notice if you start to play with some of these other shaders inside of here that uh, sometimes they'll have a, a roughness input and sometimes they'll have a gloss input. Now those are two opposite data forms uh, for both those two inputs, but um, they vary from shader to shader. So basically what you need to take away from this video is that a shader inside of Mari allows you to view multiple channels at the same time on your canvas. So you can really make accurate decisions in terms of textures for each channel. All right, great. So with that said, that's going to bring us to the end of this module. Let's go ahead and move into our next module where we'll learn about selecting and painting here inside of Mari.